from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering GitLab Commit 2020. Brought to you by GitLab. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of GitLab Commit 2020. We're here in San Francisco. It's a little bit chilly, uh, but uh, my first guests uh, on the program are, are used to the weather because they're coming to us from Wisconsin, uh, both from Northwestern Mutual. Uh, sitting to my left here is Kyle Person, who is a senior engineer, and sitting to his left is Sean Corkum, who is also a senior engineer. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having thanks us. For having All us. right, we thought, you know, both of us coming from colder uh, <laughs> climates that may, maybe coming to San Francisco would be a little warmer, uh, but they have hand warmers, they have warm drinks, and uh, it is the warmth <laughs> of the community that will warm our innards, I'm sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. There's a sign out there that says get warm, so that's what we're here to do. All right, <laughs> um, Kyle, l l let's start with you. Uh, Northwestern Mutual, I think most people are familiar with the organization, but give us a little bit of, uh, you know, how people should think of Northwestern Mutual in 2020 and uh, your roles. Yeah, so obviously, we I mean, we're a large insurance company, but also into financial services and products. And uh, we're really trying to become more of a digital company as well. We think that that's going to be a differentiator in the marketplace. You know, having apps that our customers can interact with, um, trying to speed up underwriting, things like that. So. We're really just trying to be a, a technology company as much of an insurance company. Okay, great. And Sean, I understand you're, you're on the same team as Kyle, helping yep. along with that digital transformation that, that's been all the buzz for the last couple of years. Yeah, he can't get rid of me. We flew you know, 1,200 miles and I'm still sitting next to him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, at, at Northwestern Mutual, I mean, going back a, a number of years now, the, the company started down this path of doing a digital transformation where we wanted to be you know, a software company that is providing financial service and financial stability for our clients. So it was a, a big shift that we, we started. We knew we needed to modernize everything, so we started down that path. And Great. So, we have so Kyle, maybe if you can, you know, when did GitLab enter the picture? What was kind of the initial use case? And uh, let, let's go from there. Yeah, it was before my time. Um, Sean's been there along <laughs> okay. for most of the ride. But uh, yeah, it's been several years. And it's been, uh, you know, starting out with SEM, moving into CI, and then, you know, adopting. It's a standard journey that you hear about even in the keynote today. Uh, that, that's pretty much how we charted our course. Okay. So, Sean, yeah. you, you've been there since the beginning of, uh, of, of the GitLab usage? Pretty much. It, it showed up a couple months before I got there, but uh, going back to you know, early, mid-2015, uh, yeah, uh, we had kind of a, a more of a pilot group of engineers that were, were starting out you know, to get us down this path to where we wanted to go. And they needed a, a new tool, something that worked better than what we currently had at NM. And uh, they settled on, on GitLab because it provided, you know, one, being open source was a huge selling point for us. Um, and it was just ever growing. So it allowed our developers to, to really get going and get going much faster. Okay. Great, and in the keynote, uh, Kyle, they were talking about how it's not just about the dev, the sec, and the ops, but really allowing everybody into the same tooling, even marketing and finance. What, what, what's kind of the breadth of the organization? Is it, you know, is it, is it mostly dev, is it dev and ops, does security, you know, who, who, who's involved uh, in using the, the, this tooling? It's everybody, we're, uh, we're figuring out our you know, everyone's kind of got their own spin on things. So we're in that um, classic position where I think we have the tooling sprawl that everyone talks about, and we're we're constantly evaluating. You know, how does GitLab fit into that picture? What do we bolt on? You know, we're, we have the luxury of of being able to integrate with other things as well. But then, if certainly if we can get an economy of scale where we can just use GitLab to provide that seamless interface, that's something we always look to do too. All right, so Sean, my understanding is uh, NM is also using Kubernetes and that's something that you're involved in. So why don't you bring us in? People, you know, th th sometimes get misconstrued as to the, the, the scope and the purpose uh, of, of Kubernetes. We've been at the, the KubeCon Cloud Native Con for a number of years, but uh, w why don't you set the stage for us and kind of walk us through uh, the, the what and the why of Kubernetes? Yeah, for us at least, like, being able to leverage something like Kubernetes, which when you really back out and you know do the the you know ten thousand foot view, it's container management, and being able to go into a more modern architecture, we're leveraging containers for pretty much whatever we can, or at least what makes sense, um, and that's kind of how we started down the path with GitLab moving into Kubernetes. You know, we were we were trying to figure out like where do we want to go, so you know let's not just push the boat out a little, let's drop kick the boat off the end of the pier and see where we end up. 
So we started working down the path of deploying GitLab into Kubernetes because it allowed us to easily expand and make the application highly available. So even if you know, some AZs go down in, in AWS, which knock on wood never happens, uh, we're still good to go. Our, our users are, wouldn't even notice. Okay, um, so you mentioned AWS. Is that your primary cloud, your only cloud? What, what is your cloud situation? Yeah, that's, that's uh, Northwestern Mutual's public cloud. Okay, uh, great. And speak a little bit to, you know, Amazon does have plenty of its own tooling. Uh, maybe a little bit about how GitLab and Amazon, how, how those fit together for you. Um, well, I mean, we use GitLab CI specifically to be able to provision different services and whatnot that we, we need as long as they, they fit you know, within our security requirements and you know, everything we do, we get vetted out through you know, our internal processes. But it's really allowed our developers to move forward so much faster. You know, it's kind of gone are the days of let me fill out a request for you know, X, Y, Z and you know, wait two weeks as it you know, goes through somebody's work queue and they eventually get around to it. Um, allowing our developers to just you know, do their commits, get their you know, peer review and just deploy and provision right away allows us to get our applications to market just so much faster than even a few years ago. All right, uh, so Kyle, the two of you are presenting here at the show. Uh, you know, we, we love, we heard GitLab talking on stage is, you know, customers don't just use it, they commit, they uh, add feedback, and, and they speak at the show. So maybe speak a little bit of, uh, you know, NM's, you know, involvement as to, uh, you know, are, are you committing code and what, what are you speaking about? So we're here to speak about our journey on Kubernetes. Um, Sean's covering the application side. I'm going to talk about our, our dabble in uh, Kubernetes CI. So we're, we're really looking to, um, we're looking for efficiencies, I guess, in, in density. That's a primary driver behind trying to explore the trail. But also, um, one of the things I'll talk about in the talk is, is boosting our security posture using Kubernetes. So a lot of times people are using API keys and they're getting stale and not being rotated. Uh, we can do some neat things with Kubernetes and its native IAM offerings to boost our security posture by moving towards role-based access and getting those credentials that are, are rotating and providing us uh, you know, non-stale uh, sort of authentication credentials, things like that. Yeah, Sean? Yeah. That pre <laughs> pretty much covers it. Uh, uh, and beyond with the, the CI, you know, being able to run GitLab itself within Kube and having the different components broken out, we're a lot, it's, it, it's enabling us to limit any kind of attack plane that could exist. You know, it's, you have to get through a lot to even get to it. So it's really just been a huge, a huge plus for us. Okay, I, I'd, I'd love to hear, both, both of you have been to these events a number of times, you're speaking at the event. What, what's, what's the value of coming uh, to GitLab Commit? I mean, for me, it's a, a, a huge networking thing and being able to, relay our experiences that we've gone through to other people that are out in the community. I mean, I know lots of, you know, everyone wants to see, you know, what can you do in Kubernetes? And like, here's some of the things that we've done. Here's some of the things that, you know, works that didn't work. You know, we would recommend, you know, going this kind of route if we were to start it over again. And beyond that, you know, meeting people from all over the world. Like, uh, we were talking with some, uh, some guy, gentleman, Nico from White Duck, who is you know, from Germany. It's not something you get to do, you know, face to face all the time. All right, Sean, can you share with our audience any of those? You know, if we could do it over again, we we change something. Is it an organizational uh, thing or technical piece or <laughs> don't 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 use EFS for your uh, Git repo data? It will not end well for you. That's a good, one, yeah. <laughs> good takeaway. Yeah. All right, uh, Kyle, how, how about you? You've been to a number of these shows. Uh, you know, is, is it the networking the piece, or you know, what, what else? What 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 for you personally and for NM, uh, you know, brings you back? Yeah, networking is a big thing. I think it's also getting feedback on, um, you know, what we're doing. Does it make sense? Just like GitLab is throwing things out there early, trying to tighten up that uh, contribution loop. We want to get our ideas out there, and then this is an opportunity for people to ask questions about our presentation. If maybe we're off in the wrong direction, maybe we can get that steered back on course. Um, yeah, we're just really here to get the feedback. Yeah, uh, I, I always love talking to people in the financial industry and you talk about open source. You know, if, if, if you went back, you know, five years ago, you'd probably get a little bit of sideways looks as to, wait, you know, you're doing what? Um, are we past that? Do, do you feel, are most people, uh, you know, really understanding where we are with, with cloud and open source in general that, it, you know, it makes perfect sense for a financial institution to be part of it? Yeah, I'd say at NM, we, we've finally gotten past that curve. And, now we're, we're trying to you know, make it even easier for our internal developers to 
easier participate and open source you know their internal products and contribute more to the community. Uh, we've completely you know done an about face from you know probably 15 years ago where it was open source. You want to do what to yeah, let's go. How can we make things better? It's it's all about you know our our customers. So we want to make sure we create the best product and experience for them. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah there's still some barriers there. I mean, it's all about managing risk, right? So you have to do things diligently and, and make sure that your bases are covered. And so it's not like it can be a free for all. We have to uh, do our due diligence, but we you know we love to contribute and we love to get out what's out there as we can. All right, well, Kyle and Sean, thanks so much for sharing with our audience. Best of luck uh, with your presentations and uh, have a great time at the show. Yeah, thanks thank so you. Much. All right, uh, thank you to, to NM for joining us. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE. Oh.